Hi guys, this is Bob again in southern Indiana and as promised this is a follow-up video to our previous uh, video of showing our little homebrew uh, Amico AC1 5 watt transmitter, the clone version little homebrew clone that we built up, kind of real ugly style a number of years ago and uh, we decided to go ahead and clean it up and fix it up and modernize it just a little bit and that's kind of where we've arrived at to this point. It's still not beautiful but uh, I think it's something that, uh, that will work for us. It will work enhancing some of the basic features of our little homebrew clone AC1 transmitter. We added a crystal socket and actually you can uh, use two crystals down here in the socket and switch between the two crystals from the front panel here. That works pretty well. We also added a little bias control which is a variable potentiometer 50K which replaces the 47K pot that's in the grid circuit. It gives us a little more flexibility with loading and tuning under certain conditions. We haven't done a whole lot with the inside. We cleaned it up just a little bit, uh, but it's basically still the same kind of ugly uh, homebrew transmitter. It puts out about uh, anywhere from 4 to uh, about 10 watts, depending on the band and the antenna and the tuner and a variety of conditions. And what we did was uh, we went ahead and uh, decided to concentrate on making this thing usable with a DDS VFO because we really, really like that extra flexibility. In addition, uh, no matter how hard we try, there's still a slight, slight chirp uh, with some of the crystals. We have a few 40-meter uh, crystals we tried out, worked with. There's some of them over there. And uh, so the, the, uh, and the flexibility that you gain with a VFO is just undeniable. So we went ahead and focused uh, some on that area, and we came up with a solution that actually works pretty well. So let's take a quick listen to uh, what this rig sounds like just for a minute. We'll send a CQ. We're set up on the low end of 40 meter, or uh, 20 meters right now using a 20 meter ver vertical. Uh, this rig uh, using the DDS VFO uh, loads up to just about uh, 7, 8 watts output on 20 meters. And uh, of course we're using our, uh, all, this, all of our equipment to, in this configuration as homebrew. And uh, we're going to use our PS2 keyboard to control the, uh, the Arduino keyer. And we've got a CQ programmed in there, so let's let's fire that up, and then uh, we'll listen to it uh, on our uh, Drake R4 receiver, which is actually physically on the next bench over. We'll have to spin around and listen to it. Let me turn that up here first. We checked just a second ago, and there's nobody on this frequency. So we'll hit our pre-programmed CQ. So as you can tell, the tone is just real nice sounding, real sweet to my ears uh, on that CW note. Unfortunately, we didn't get any response to our CQ, but uh, this time of the morning with, uh, with 8 watts, probably not going to happen on the first try. Uh, also, we did check the uh, reverse beacon uh, network, and we got 11 hits uh, pretty much spread out across the country on that last very short CQ. So I think the rig is working real well for us. I think the key to get this rig to work acceptably uh, using the DDS VFO was to get enough amplifier stages after the VFO to boost that weak signal at 0.6 volt p to peak signal up to something that's adequate to drive uh, the grid circuit of this uh, of this 5763 uh, beam power pento that we could see in the rig there. And uh, to do that we, uh, we went ahead and we started with our uh, existing 20 dB broadband amplifier that's based on a 2N5109 right there. That's good for about 15, 16 dB gain. We could actually drive the rig with that but the power output was way down. So we went ahead and built up a little, uh, a little uh, second uh, amplifier stage that we uh, have included in the chain after the broadband amplifier. It's based on an IRF 510A a uh, little uh, HexFET amplifier that we use as an amplifier. Very simple design. There's a lot of, of uh, uh, schematics on the web uh, for that rig. Uh, we'll see if we can see it down in there. We've also got in there the uh, the HexFETs on the left, the FET, and the uh, on the right the other little black uh, device is a uh, is a voltage regulator. It's a five volt regulator. Very simple circuit and. Uh, uh, the key is to get it biased correctly. We have a variable potentiometer in there in the bias circuit so we can get it set just right for just about class B uh, bias. It's about 3.1, 3.2 volts on that uh, 
on the drain of that, uh, or I'm sorry, on the gate of that circuit. So uh, we got that uh, tweaked up and working real well, and that gives us an additional 20 dB gain at the power level that we need, and uh, that results in about 1.8 volts in, or I'm sorry, 1.8 watts into uh, the uh, grid circuit of this of this Amoco AC1 clone, which drives that tube to just about the seven, eight, nine watts that we're hoping for uh, on the, on some of the bands. To follow the flow, to make this whole setup work, and again this is just a prototype and it's kind of set up, laid out all over the bench here, uh, we start with the DDS VFO which we've looked at before. This is our uh, Arduino DDS homebrew VFO. And then we drive this little uh, uh, 59, 5109 uh, broadband amplifier and we feed the signal into our newly built IRF 510 uh, amplifier. And again, this is just built in a junk chassis. It's a little uh, MFW filter uh, box that we had available. It's also uh, it's mounted on a pretty good sized heat sink in there, uh, although the heat doesn't seem to be a problem at 12 volts. We're running everything at 12 volts in a system. And then the signal uh, we feed into our, uh, our, our, our uh, AC1 clone uh, transmitter. In addition to make this whole thing work, we've got this uh, TR uh, transmit receive uh, box over here that we built. It's homebrew. Uh, it uh, has a variable hang time that you can set on the front. Also it has a, a audio side tone if you want to use it for CW and a, an additional uh, uh, relay function that we use sometimes for muting receivers. So there's that box. We're, we're keying that and we're keying the little transmitter box and we're also uh, keying the uh, VFO uh, at the same time. We actually are or keying the VFO circuit, we modified the code just a little bit to allow that to happen, and that way we we don't have a side tone in the receiver all the time uh, bothering us right on that frequency. <clears throat> and we back out just a little bit here. We've also got our Arduino keyer in the mix and a straight key in the mix as well. We're powering every we're powering the uh, transmitter itself with uh, 350 volts uh, on the plate and uh, and. Uh, 6.3 volts filament from this old heath kit supply and then we power all the other devices with uh, with 12 volts from a, from a common bench supply so there we have it uh, the rig works works real well for us and uh, we're pleased to have been able to accomplish this and now we have a lot of flexibility driving it primarily with a with a VFO